Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Richard here. Welcome back to my video channel. It's um, Tuesday, the 29th of August today, and it's a really warm, sunny day. It's uh, 27 degrees, according to my weather station here, and uh, that's at 2.09 in the afternoon on uh, Tuesday, the 29th of uh, August. We've had some, some fantastic weather here. I have to say, today's really hot, and uh, I've been out running this morning. Had a re I'm on holiday for two weeks. This is the second of my first two weeks, so, so yes, but it's been absolutely wonderful. I'm going to do a couple of things today. I'm going to talk to you about um, some stuff that's arrived in the post, and then I want to talk about Memory Lane magazines. There are some really, really good articles in there if you're into dance band, Elboli, and other interesting things, particularly around Hella Fitzgerald and our, it's the 100th anniversary as well. And then what I thought I'd do is then take you into the uh, main house and um, I've got a set up there that on my new amplifier, the um, Techniques SU-X3320, which arrived. And last time, I think you may remember, that I um, I just mentioned it in passing, showing a shot of it, and I've now powered it up, and it's uh, it's working really well. I'm really really happy with the sound, and I've got some new records that I've found in the charity shop, so I'm going to play one of those. And uh, so that's just a flavour of what's going on. But um, also like to mention that um, I really appreciate people's comments. So if you're a new subscriber to my channel, do subscribe. Look forward to comments from you. If you're somebody who's been around with me on this journey, which is which is going on for well, for as far as I can remember, a long time. I had a, funny enough, I had a, a, a comment back from somebody on the dual 502, I think it was, or 506, one of the two, a record player that I repaired back in 2013. Hey, 2013, that's a long time ago. And um, they were asking me about the belt size, um, and you know, I don't carry that sort of stuff around in my head, but what I was able to do was give them a link to eBay, where I bought the belt myself, which was still up there, so they were to answer those questions. But I really do appreciate uh, receiving um, comments from people. I'd really like to know your views on my current channel. What do you think of it? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it too long? Is it too short? Is the interest there? Because one of the things I do, I scan the recommended uh, channels and if I like them I then when I'm in my office on my computer I then click the subscribe box and unsubscribe others that are getting a bit tired or a bit too long. Some for me, if they're too long I lose interest. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and. Um, the average length of video shouldn't, I think, shouldn't be longer than what 15, 20 minutes, because they're snapshots, aren't they? And they should be about interesting st stuff. Uh, there's one or two uh, videos I do tend to give time to, but um, you know, you really need to cut to the chase on occasion. But that's maybe me it's impatience, maybe about getting to the end result, seeing what's happening. But I love watching YouTube. I watch YouTube quite a lot as part of my television. Uh, evenings and uh, along with other stuff fit it in find out what's going on there's one or two people I love watching finding out what they're doing they're blogging about things they find in uh, particularly thrift shops in America and uh, other channels are talking about cars uh, there's um, one or two others talk about repairing of radios which I really enjoy because they've got great knowledge and they do things in a really good way and uh, so but I really like to hear what you think and uh, so, so there we are. This is what I put it out there, really. So let me take Mr. GoPro Hero Four off his channel, off his channel, off his, off his uh, perch, and um, show you what I've got in front of me here. So just bear with me a second. Right here we go. So the, we've got two amplifiers here, or one radio amplifier, and uh, the first one is the um, Pioneer um, SA510. Yeah, I'm going This is the amp that I have as a spare. And I've been using this because the Tanzii, not the one that's showing below, but the Tanzii is the same as this, this one over here, started playing up. And I'm sure it's on the power side of things that she's doing lots of crackles. As yet, I've not really had a chance to take the, take the case off and have a look and do a bench test, really. But um, I'm hoping that I can fix it. But I did see this one on eBay, and um, I waited till it had... Um, the bids had finished because it was on there for I think it was 70 odd quid or something and I went back to the seller and said um, would you accept half price so he did and I think I got less than 35 pounds all in all um, which is it arrived so I haven't even powered this up yet but it's uh, yeah it's almost the same model the controls slightly different on the balance here 
Um, some of the knobs are quite loose, as you can see. They just need sticking, this cosmetic. And one of the VU lamps has gone, but then that's not unusual because the other one, they'd all gone. And I used some car lamps uh, that, I, that, I got, that I'd got spare kicking about, and that seemed to give a nice glow. So that, that's what's currently in use in the other machine. So, um, there we are. So, without further ado, I'll stop the video now and then we'll rejoin when I'm upstairs in the office. See you soon. Well, welcome back everybody. And we're now in the um, main house. Uh, and um, I want to chat to you about one or two things that I mentioned downstairs in the workshop this afternoon. Um, one of them is the Memory Lane. Um, I'm a great subscriber of the Memory Lane Society and this is their quarterly magazine. It's full of really interesting stuff, particularly about early dance, British dance band music and also um, other things of interest. In this, uh, the autumn, this is the autumn edition, uh, there's a very good article about um, Ella Fitzgerald and I'm a great Ella fan. I just love her music from the early days of hearing um, one of my mother's records, uh, the London Palladium, where she played, um, where she did some amazing, what they call scatting, and uh, how she learned that art as well in here. And um, Geraldine Miller does a really, does her justice. It really is a very good a good um, article. One of the things I was very sad to hear was that Ella developed um, diabetes in later life and was had uh, both legs amputated from below the knee, which I thought was very sad. And uh, she only ever gave another concert um, from her wheelchair, one other concert before she retired. And then she died in 19... Uh, where are we? 1996, um, she passed away and a uh, great loss to the jazz world, I think. She's got the most amazing rhythm and pitch and uh, syncopation and, and phrasing that I think of, of any, any jazz star of the era, really. Um, and a very sad beginning as well, but really worth a read there. There's a ve another very good article in here by my friend, good friend, Jonathan Holmes, who works for the BBC in Bristol. And um, Jonathan's done an amazing story about the uh, BBC Record Library, which um, I knew very little about, and the amount of 78 records and other formats in which um, he was privileged to. It's not open to the public, and he makes that quite clear, but he had a, you know, a vested um, interest, obviously working with the BBC, but um, for, you know, and, and to, to be able to do an article about it, I thought was really good. If you're interested in uh, Al Bowley or the as a singer or early British dance band, then you must come to the Memory Lane London event that we've got happening. I think it's in uh, October, yes, 7th of October. There may not be any tickets left now, but if there are and you're interested in this, then obviously I'll put the link to Memory Lane. You have to be a member, well, you can not be a member, but if you are a member, it'd be even better um, because we do need to keep the subscriptions up because this is a really interesting um, quarterly magazine, as I say, and um, uh, we have a really good time there and uh, we have a, a group come sing, um, Brendan Shaw and his rhythm makers come and do some singing in the El Boli style and we have films and talks, uh, Terry Brown is there and Ray Pellet who um, look, is the editor and who looks after things and it's held at the Artist Club in London uh, and a really fantastic atmosphere there, lots of young people come along to that so uh, and quite people in their middle ages and uh, not so young, so it's good. Good, it's a good event to have. Anyway, I want to talk to you now, just switching slightly to some records that I found in a local charity shop. There's a chap called Charlie Spivak who I'd never heard of, and um, and I haven't really done much research on Charlie because I've been playing his music. So there was a set in the Oxfam shop that I saw and thought, well, these are interesting. Then I thought to myself, well, I've got enough records, really, haven't I? Do I really need any more? But these caught my eye. And as they were in these beautiful, hard, cardboard case, um, matte cases, somebody treasured these. In fact, so much so, they even catalogued them with Dymo tape on the back, CS10 and so forth. So I bought some of these. I didn't buy them all, because there was quite a lot there. This one's called Charlie Spivak and his Orchestra Bulldozer. This is, um, this is the only one I don't think I have played yet, but I'm looking forward to. And it's, it's actually on the, uh, on the, what label 
was this on? It's, it's on Big Bear's label. <laughs> um, actually, if we just take the record out and have a look, I don't think I realised that. It's on the Big Bear Nyarkive label, this one. So, and uh, well worth a listen to when I get around to it. What I have listened to on First Time Records is uh, Chick Webb and his orchestra here. This is 1937 to 1939 and uh, I have played this a couple of times. Some of these records are from transcriptions from the people that made their own recordings or they were taken off air, so air checks basically. Um, but again, very nice case, very nice and uh, quite hard back there, quite heavy. Uh, what I haven't played is the One Night Stand with Erskine Hawkins and again uh, it's on the Joyce LP label. Um, now I've got some Joyce LPs from before and thoroughly enjoyed um, listening to those so it's another one there. I haven't played that yet either. And finally I found in my local charity shop literally up the road uh, uh, the famous Born Free album uh, with uh, with Virginia McKenna and um, also with Bill Travers here. Um, interesting notes on the line notes of this one to say that both Virginia and Bill had never seen a lion in the wild. Uh, the only time they'd seen lions in the wild until they have made Born Free was actually in a zoo. And of course uh, Virginia, Virginia McKenna set up a trust after making a Born Free with Elsa. Uh, I remember as a very young child going to see Born Free and coming out with tears streaming down my face because it's such a beautiful film. Uh, John, John Barry wrote the music for this and Matt Manro did the main title theme. And uh, so this record I've played already, it's really lovely to hear. And some of the other tracks that, I've, that very rarely get played I was, I've been listening to, so it's been good. Okay, so... Um, what I thought I'd talk to you about now is the Techniques SUX320, which is this machine. I'm going to take you off the, um, take uh, Mr. GoPro off his stand here and just turn around so you can see what's on my computer screen. Because I've taken some photographs of this amplifier before I powered it up, just to check inside all the components there. As you see, there's a very large um, transistor in the centre cent there, which has got an enormous heatsink with it, and it's got its own fan back up there, which I've had running. Um, it's really a lovely piece of kit, this actually. I have to say, I was I've been very impressed with um, its uh, its performance, and I'm going to play you a record this afternoon to prove that. Um, it's got the most enormous power supply as well, and uh, there it is, face on and uh, with the case on and there it is installed <laughs> which uh, is exactly the same as I'm going to show you in a second so I just thought I'd show you there um, so yes it's actually hooked up to the Rotel record player um, and I'm going to play another record which um, I picked up and this one is the radio disc of Charlie Spivak and Irene Day this again is on the Joyce label um, Really, obviously, Charlie Spivak was a trumpet player, um, as you can see from from the cover here. This is the mid '40s. This one was done, so it's a swing era. Uh, and I thought I'd play you um, the last track on side one, just to give an example. Uh, Take me in your arms is called. But before then, if I just give you a walk around the Techniques SUX320. Now this is part of an integrated amplifier system, which means there was a um, radio tuner, a cassette deck and a record deck that went with this and they all integrated because on the back of this there are plugs to plug those power supplies in. Um, it also has the feature of a sur surround sound here, which when you press that without the surround sound extra pieces it just makes the treble will come out further with the setup that I've got here in the office. And I'm using um, a setup of Jamo speakers and I'm using four of those. They're done in um, the usual stereo setup but the two that are done in a way, because this is quite a large room and uh, the acoustics in here, I've got them set up in parallel so you've got the right and left. So you've got one there, one on the desk, one in the window and then if I swing round you've got one behind me and I found that that was the best setup in the other office it was a bit smaller 
and the sound wasn't quite as deep or as alive, I suppose, because these speakers really do give you a, a sort of sound stage. They're three-way. They're eight to sixteen homes each, but um, driven by this uh, amplifier, which is fifty watts per channel, they seem to work extremely well. Um, so, so we've got, as I say, getting back to it, if we switch on, we power up. This amplifier uses the decibel as part of its um, volume control, and then you've got this minimal here, a maximum here, and then I put a pointer on there, because this volume, the, con the control knob just goes, just would go round and round and round, but um, you'll see what I mean when I, if you, if you adjust it down, goes right down to zero and of course everyone knows that decibels are sound, are sound pressure so I'm not totally sure that that is how it operates here because you've got 49 then it drops 50 as you go up it goes down so whether the pressure decreases at certain points I've not looked I've looked it up on the internet and all I know is where sound pressure decibels come from as we all know, sound pressure is, and decibels is when you often subject to hearing loss and you need to wear hearing protectors. For example, my um, lawnmower is 96 decibels, and that's always advised that you should wear some hearing protection at that point. But I'd be interested to know what people think. Um, so there's also a volume preset. That works with all the other integrated stuff. Um, balance, treble, and a bass and treble, which I've set slightly off-center from... Uh, and I've also set the super bass or bass plus there because that gives a really deep sound, gives you more more of a stage sound effect there. The only information I could find was on the internet, which was this, which was the Hi-Fi Engine website, and gave you all the distortion on here. And then there is the I also managed to find the service manual. But that didn't really give me a great deal of information as such. Um, so the the you know really about and the only reason I learned that it was obviously integrated system was because looking at the service manual basically and all the other things that were li linked to it, um, and also how to service the fan, which is quite an important technical part, knowing that it's got such a large transistor to drive the whole system through. So, but without further ado. I thought I'd play you the last track on here and this is the Rotel which you have seen before on my videos and afterwards we'll continue our chat. That's the last track.
wonderful. That's uh, Irene, Irene Day, spelled D-A-Y-E. So that's really good. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And this is playing on the Rotel RP-1000. I've just checked, because you forget when you use these things all the time. And um, this machine was actually given to me. It was found in a loft. And somebody had uh, bought this house near Faversham and brought this into the office. It's a belt-driven machine. And I just love it to bits. I mean, it uh, works so well. Um, it has got a Perspex lid, which um, I've taken off, because I tend to want it without that but it's a uh, very firm one of my firm favorites there so so that's the Techniques um, SUX320 uh, and it's uh, also says it's an, an act by by base whatever that means by active current sensor and um, I've put this pointer on the front here really just to give me a reference point so when I'm turning this up and down because you can you can forget where you've left the volume sometimes, you can give yourself a bit of a blast. Below this is the Techniques Compact Display SLPG200A, which is a fantastic piece of kit. I've done a video about that in the past, and it really plays very, very well. Um, and um, it's got an interesting loading system, actually. Very similar to most CD, CD players, but it loads, it loads the CD with a piece that comes down from the top as opposed to from the bottom. When the when the CD is in play, below that you've got the um, Technique Stereo Cassette Deck RS B seven double five, and this is a direct drive system. Um, by the way, none of these two are working when I bought them on eBay, um, but they are now. And um, so the cassette deck really is an extremely nice piece of kit. And sitting alongside that uh, is the Akai, my famous Akai. GX 4000D which is bomb proof basically and I've got lots of reel-to-reel -reel tapes um, and I bought this from Germany about eight years ago maybe nine years ago and it's now a firm favorite here and just in the background you might see there there we go is my Sony digital radio which I play through the amplifier stereo one and he, he's quite uh, he's I quite like him as a design piece but um, he works really well, picks up a dab signal very well. So I like listening to um, class F class, uh, Jazz FM on here and Classic FM, both of which are available on dab. So, and I get a good signal in this part of the house. But to play us out, I thought I'd play my HMV 101 and I've got a, a Jack Payne record here. This is on the Imperial label, Oh That Kiss by Jack Payne. So we're gonna go back to the 30s now and listen to Jack and enjoy and then we'll catch up before the end. Nights like this 
Have the swell reaction What's the big attraction Oh, that kiss Jack Payne there and uh, some of you may have seen this machine before it's um, been with me since the age of 11 basically and um, I bought it or got given it as part of uh, what was then jumble sale and uh, it's had a new I fitted a new spring and it's had a new gasket and everything completely refurbished in the time that I've owned it and it's I suppose I've dug it out because it was so because it's like the holy grail to me of, of gramophones it links me to why I started in this hobby and uh, it's been uh, stored for a while but I've dug her out now I've got this nice new office and sitting next to that is the VV50 which of course is the Vitrola which I think I did a few videos about and so I play though and be joined by the Decca 75 which will go here sometime and uh, we'll be doing some videos about that too so just like to um, before we return you turn Mr GoPro to his stand here we go and uh, if I don't rock the table too much just like to say thank you very much look forward to all your comments and uh, new subscribers and also um, lots of nice comments about the Ford Mondeo my Mondi and the new wheels that have been fitted and they're really doing well with the Pirelli tyres so lots of nice comments back from that see you all soon in the next one take care <laughs>